NASA is taking reports of UFOs very seriously nowadays and has an entire committee dedicated to studying their reports and publishing recommendations for how NASA should monitor them into the future. We just got to see the first full report from the committee, including what they think NASA should be doing, how it might use smartphone apps to track them in the future, and whether or not they can rule out extraterrestrial origins for these objects. I've looked through the full report so you don't have to. I'll summarise the most important and interesting bits here, and we'll also discuss those mummified aliens that were shown a day or so before this report was published. NASA doesn't like to use the term UFO anymore and instead refers to these objects and events as Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, UAPs. I think this is for a couple of reasons, one practical and one social. Practically, it's because they aren't limiting this research to things flying in the air, but also includes events in water, on land, and potentially in space too. Socially, NASA is really trying to present this as scientific research, investigating the world and the universe around us. And UFO has something of a sensationalist implication. It really implies something extraterrestrial to most people, and most, if not all, of these UAPs are going to have very much terrestrial origins. The goal of the committee, which is completely independent from the US government, is to totally understand what the things in these reports are. Are they boats or balloons, drones or even extraterrestrial in origin? NASA itself has access to lots of satellites and imaging and sensors all over the planet, which can be perfect for trying to get as much information on all of these events as possible. The big NASA goal is to understand the whole universe, and that includes the strange things happening here on Earth. They've now looked at about 800 reports of these UAPs, which it officially defines as sightings that cannot be identified as aircraft or known natural phenomena from a scientific perspective. Most of these 800 sightings are pretty easily explained. For example, a common one has been boats that are low on the horizon tricking pilots with strange perspectives. And at this point in time, only 2 to 5% of the database is still truly anomalous and can't be explained. Of course, the big question from most people is are any of these objects alien in origin? NASA has been very clear on their response to this. They have absolutely no evidence that any of these things are from aliens. But they're also not ruling it out. Is it possible? Yes, in theory. Is it likely? Not at all. They are making this a purely data and evidence-based thing, and trying to replace sensationalist claims with scientific work. That said, it would be incredibly foolish to rule out explanations when you have no real evidence about what they could be. They even go so far as describing alien origins for these phenomena as plausible in the final remarks of report. But plausible doesn't mean they think it's likely. Actually, NASA director Bill Nelson was pretty clear about his thoughts too. There are billions of galaxies in the universe, billions of stars in each of those galaxies, and many of those stars will have multiple planets around them. With telescopes like JWST, we will eventually discover a medium-sized rocky planet around a medium-sized star like the Sun, with the right axial tilt in the habitable zone, with carbon, water, and a breathable atmosphere. In reality, there are likely billions of these planets in the universe, and surely some of them will have life on them. On this, Bill Nelson and I actually agree. Surely somewhere there is life. The issue is that these things are all so far away, at least light years and up to billions of light years. We humans haven't even sent a person to our closest neighbour planets, so it's kind of hard for me to imagine a civilization with the capabilities to travel that far, especially given the current age of the universe. Improbable, but probably not impossible. What is cool is that in response to all of this, NASA has appointed a new director of UAP research. Someone to lead that research, and someone to lead the cross-government information and asset sharing. Initially, when this report came out, they wouldn't actually tell us the name of the person, since so many of the members of the committee have experienced harassment from the public about being part of this research. Since that initial response though, they have come out and said it's someone called Mark McKinney a previous NASA liaison to the Department of Defense. One of the big issues with doing work like this is getting hold of good data on the events being reported. 
Most are just blurry images or very short videos, and that can make it hard to understand what these UAPs actually are. NASA now wants lots of reports, so they also want to remove any stigma around reporting what people think might be UFOs. You can now report them pretty much directly to NASA, and they're hoping that having NASA involved so officially will help the public, and also commercial pilots, to report many more events without fear of being laughed at. Another way to encourage this might be to create some sort of smartphone app to allow people to report them easily through that app. Phones can take so much information, like photo and video, but also they can measure things like gravitational fields, magnetic field, location, and more. So if people were willing to use something like this, it might be something they explore in the future. Although I don't think they have anything concrete just yet. The reason they want so many reports, even if most of them turn out to be mundane and very terrestrial, is because they're looking for a needle in a haystack, but they don't know what that needle looks like. Therefore, to find it, they need to know very well what the hay looks like. If they knew what the needles are, they could model the properties of that needle and search for other things with that properties. This is something called matched filtering. It's also the thing they use to find gravitational waves in those detectors, but it actually won't work here. They don't know what sort of UAP they come across that might be the most interesting one. So they need to know exactly what the hay is so they can throw those ones out. And eventually, they'll just be left with the needles. NASA wants to turn the idea of if you see something, say something, into if you see something, capture high quality data and footage of it, then say something. I actually wrote an article on a previous panel discussion they did about all of this UAP work, which includes a bit more information and some of the funny anecdotes of silly things that were recorded as UAPs. It also talks about why the committee only used declassified data for the work and nothing classified. So if you want to know more about those things, then please check out the article I'll leave in the description. The report also makes clear that artificial intelligence and machine learning will be crucial in these searches. When looking for patterns in the data and the reports, AI can be the perfect tool for finding those patterns or finding interesting and unique things in the data that human eyes could miss. The AI isn't being used to capture the UAPs or report them, but it will be used to analyze some of the data they receive. In summary, this committee took hundreds of reports of UAPs, their new name for UFOs, but they so far have absolutely no evidence that any of these reports feature objects with an extraterrestrial origin. They aren't ruling out that possibility, but it is in no way a leading theory for any of them. They did promise that if NASA did find evidence for ET involvement, that they would share it with the public, although they stopped short of admitting whether or not they have a plan for that already in place, for if or when they need it. NASA talked a lot about the UAPs, but not that much of it was exciting revelations about them just yet. The report is mostly talking about how they will deploy assets, time, and human power in the future to continue the quest to understand what these UAPs are, trying to remove the stigma of reporting them, and being open about everything they find. All great things, but we're all waiting to hear about them finding aliens, right? <laughs> Hasn't happened yet, might never happen, but this process is a great way to go about finding those answers if they exist. Now, let's look at those mummified aliens, allegedly found in Peru, that were presented to Congress in Mexico recently. Now, to be clear, this was a journalist showing these corpses to the Mexican government, not the government claiming they had aliens. Here, I am incredibly skeptical. First of all, the journalist who presented them has a long history of claiming to have alien samples, including bodies, and even presented what turned out to be mummified human children in the past. To be honest, that is not a good starting point for me, but I have more problems with this too. First of all, I just don't believe that an alien would look that close to us humans. Standing on two legs, two eyes, lots of similarities. Come on, what are the chances that their planet and physiology would lead them to evolve to be so similar? That's not hard evidence, of course, it's just my opinion. The claim was that these specimens have 30% unknown DNA, making them aliens. But to be honest, 30% seems very low to me if they're aliens. But it's also surprising that an alien would even have DNA, isn't it? Is that a requirement for life or intelligence? I just don't think it is. If that's the basis for the claim though, it's pretty easy to test. They just need to release samples of the two corpses to other countries or universities. Let that claim be checked. Now, to be honest, I'm not expecting that to happen because I don't believe these are aliens and I think the people presenting them know that. 
But that's the only way this claim will be taken seriously. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and so far I just don't think we have that yet. So to conclude, I, I don't think those are aliens. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on all of this though in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team, I'll see you soon. Bye!